Okay guys, uh, you can hear we've got a uh, sick radio. It's an All-American 5, and uh, this comes to me from uh, someone local. Um, they had it and asked me to uh, look at it. They don't have the uh, cabinet, but they were doing the electrical restoration, and I think they got all new caps in, less this one, and I know this one's bad for sure because um, it uh, should be a safety cap, and you can see I've cut the lead right there if it's showing up. And uh, the reason why, when I brought this thing up on full power on the uh, Variac, it started uh, oozing uh, some uh, goo from it. So that capacitor is uh, most likely shorted for now. I've just got it uh, cut out of the circuit. Looks like all the uh, resistors are original and uh, all the caps have been replaced, less the uh, micas, or what I would assume to be micas. And then one of these uh, multi-section uh, capacitors has been put in in a new line cord. I haven't tested the tubes. I did uh, take a glance at the uh, plate voltages and they seem to be uh, rather close. So uh, we may have just a bad tube or uh, maybe there's something going on with one of the uh, remaining resistors. Um, you can see here, uh, it's probably not showing up well, I'll do a little picture-in-picture picture here just for a moment. It's my uh, Heathkit signal tracer. I'll be using it. It's a uh, IT-12. And um, the antenna that he furnished uh, with this that he's been doing his troubleshooting on is uh, laying right here. And I've got the external lead disconnected as well and got that going to a wire antenna because uh, the RF sensitivity uh, just with the uh, loop antenna uh, seems to be uh, you know, compromised or very weak at best. So um, let's go ahead and start doing some um, signal tracing. I'm going to start in the audio section. Um, I've looked at the schematic. This is the uh, 50L6 uh, power tube here. Uh, we'll start out looking at the plate. And this lead I said that's coming over here this is my B minus lead, and the uh, B minus of this goes back to the uh, negative side of the probe and will be in the audio selection on the probe. All right, hopefully, you guys don't mind, but I'm going to uh, kind of zoom in here and uh, just focus on the chassis itself, and then I'll do picture in picture for my uh, points that I'll be attaching the, uh, the signal probe. Um, so I mentioned uh, earlier, we'll start here on the uh, 50L6, uh, pin number 3, which is the plate. Very distorted. So um, let's move back to the uh, grid on the uh, 50L6. Okay, we just checked uh, pin 3 in the plate. That's more or less your uh, output that uh, goes over to the uh, audio output uh, transformer, which uh, drives the speaker. The uh, grid itself resides uh, here. I can just attach right here to this uh, cap. It goes back to uh, pins number what, 1, 2, 3, 4. Pin number 5 is uh, grid number 1. It is uh, notated on the picture-in-picture uh, -picture there on the schematic. Still got the probe here set for the uh, audio mode, most forward position on the uh, tester. Let's see what we've got here. Still very distorted. Just an example here of the amplitude. The uh, grid signal would be weaker, and of course the plate would be stronger. Let's jump back over to the plate. I want to adjust the amplitude, and we should see or hear an increase in the amplitude. Okay, let's uh, move back to the uh, preceding tube. All right, the next tube that we want to check that precedes the uh, 50L6 here is the uh, 14 Baker 6, and it's located over here in the chassis. And uh, we'll look at the plate output. And uh, one indicator, and this has the uh, correct color coding for the uh, IF transformers, and you'll see blue is indicated for the plate. 
and uh, that comes back to uh, what pin number two right here. So uh, let's get the probe on there and uh, just listen to the audio on the plate of the uh, 14B6 which drives the uh, grid here of the uh, 50L6 and see if we have the same distortion. You can hear we still got the same uh, audio distortion. It really sounds uh, bad. So uh, let's move back here in the circuit real quick. With the plate being distorted, let's move over to the grid. The grid here on the uh, 14 Baker 6 is uh, pin number 3. And uh, you'll see it's fed here, this capacitor, back over to the uh, taper position on the uh, volume control. This would be the ground, and the uh, white lead coming in would be our uh, high side. So uh, let's see what we've got here. We'll check here, and then we'll go back to the uh, high side of the pot. Now since we're going through the uh, volume control, I'll need to turn up the uh, volume potentiometer here to drive more signal toward the uh, grid itself here. I'm going to turn the amp up here on the uh, heath kit tracer, then we'll adjust the volume here. You can see it's still uh, distorted. Okay, let's go back to the uh, high side here of the uh, potentiometer, which is this uh, white lead here. So uh, still very distorted. So that's all the audio checks that we can make on the uh, radio. Everything else will be in the RF section. Alright, let's stick with the uh, 14 Baker 6 and uh, now we're going to be in the RF mode. You can see I've switched the uh, probe here back to the RF section and uh, we're going to look at uh, pin number 6. It's uh, one of the diodes here. And uh, this will be the RF signal input to the uh, detector tube. Okay, still uh, distorted there, so uh, let's continue to move back here. The uh, preceding tube is the uh, 14 Alpha 7. It resides right here in the chassis, and uh, I'm going to just jump over to the uh, plate itself. In uh, doing so, if we hear the same distortion, you can see on the schematic that I'm showing that uh, that means the uh, second IF uh, filter should be in good shape. So uh, let's go ahead and check the uh, plate here, which is uh, pin number two. See what we've got there. Then we'll back up to the grid. You'll notice the, this in common as well. You've got a blue lead here, and it attaches here. So I'm going to attach right here to pin number two. Plastic selection of vehicles, cars, trucks, anything anybody wants. And you can still hear the uh, distortion there. So uh, let's move to the grid itself here see what we've got. Let's just check in here to see if the distortion was still present. And you can hear we're still extremely distorted here. Let me uh, hook up here to uh, pin number, uh, what I say, six, which is uh, grid number one here. On the uh, 14A7, which uh, serves as the uh, IF amplifier. Now this may detune the uh, radio itself. Get an indicator here by turning the volume up for a moment. So I have detuned it just a little bit. Let me turn the gain up here, see if we can hear anything. You guys probably can't hear it, but I can hear a very, very faint signal. I think the amplitude of my signal is so low at this point uh, coming into the uh, receiver for some reason that um, it's probably impairing my ability to be able to uh, troubleshoot there on the grid. But uh, just to prove that, let's uh, bounce back to the uh, RF tube and uh, check the plate because uh, our problem may be in that first uh, IF itself. 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move over here to the uh, 7A8, the 7 Alpha 8. It resides right here in the circuit. It, you can see it's right on the bottom side of the uh, 50L6. This is our uh, converter tube. Uh, it serves as the uh, RF amp and um, the oscillator circuit itself um, attaches uh, back to this point. So um, let's check the uh, plate. Uh, the plate here for the uh, 7 a8 tube is uh, pin number two. So uh, looking at the key here, uh, pin number one, pin number two should be right here at this point. Let's check there and see if we can detect a uh, signal. Get the probe here to uh, pin number two. You know the wire looks green, but it's just faded. So um, this is actually the uh, blue lead coming from the uh, IF transformer. And you can see that does detune the uh, circuit just a little bit. Okay, I cannot make out a uh, signal there using an off-air station. Let me uh, hook up my RF signal generator and increase the amplitude here and uh, tie it in here to my uh, yellow lead which you guys can see goes back to a, a long wire antenna so you guys recall I'm using the uh, loop antenna that uh, he supplied as well as this and uh, let me see if I can increase the uh, amplitude here to the receiver using a uh, modulated tone and uh, see if we can detect anything there on the plate of the uh, 7 8 8 Okay, I've got my signal generator hooked up now, and uh, let me just rotate here. I'm somewhere around uh, 1300 to 1400 uh, kilocycles. All right, let me uh, turn that volume down and uh, let me get the probe again now, and uh, let's check here at the uh, plate and uh, see what we've got. Okay, you can hear the uh, tone. The uh, only problem or something that's concerning to me, I've got my uh, signal generator, very little of attenuation place. I'm having to drive a very, very high level into the tube itself uh, to be able to get much out of it. Go back over here to the grid real quick. I'm still a uh, suspect of the uh, IF uh, filter itself, and I haven't checked the alignment. This thing may be way off as well, so uh, maybe that's part of the problem also. Let's uh, work our way back over here to the uh, grid itself on the 7A8. All right, I had to check the uh, two manual real quick. Just look at my schematic, the uh, 7A8. It's uh, pin number, what I say, six is your um, grid input for the uh, antenna section itself. But it, uh, pins one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's where this uh, mica cap attaches and the uh, blue lead. And that's probably the same blue lead here that wraps out to be able to leverage the uh, external antenna as well. Let's see what we've got there. Okay, I can hear just a bit of that signal. It seems uh, way, way too low. I just uh, took all my attenuation out, so I'm full 100% gain off of my RF signal generator going into this point. Let's check on the other side of this uh, old capacitor right here and see. And of course, this is a, a coupling cap. I think the uh, schematic uh, indicated somewhere around the five uh, picofarads. 
So uh, we may detune the uh, receiver here as well. There's my signal. Okay, I would expect the uh, cap to uh, reduce some of the amplitude of the RF signal, but um, something's uh, still not right here. My uh, signal or amplitude of the signal should be a lot higher than uh, what we're able to uh, detect. Let me get my external lead right here hooked back up to the chassis. Let's just rely on the loop antenna itself that uh, he provided and uh, see if we get uh, an improvement there. Okay guys, this lead you see right here, this yellow lead, um, it's coming right off of my RF signal generator. I'm going to turn the amplitude wide open and uh, reduce all my attenuation on my RF signal generator. Peek the radio out and I'm going to just lay this wire here acting as a near field probe over the top of the uh, antenna itself. All right, let me make sure that I'm uh, getting the signal here. All right, let's go back with the probe here and check now and see if we can detect anything. I'm going to go back to the plate for a moment. Still just a ton of distortion there. Same thing here for the grid. Let's go back over here on the other side of this capacitor. Yeah, something there seems odd in the uh, antenna section itself. All right, I'm just double checking myself here. Let me uh, push this radio back just a bit. Let's get the uh, loop antenna out here and take a closer look at it. All right, this yellow lead coming from my uh, signal generator here. Let me hook it up and uh, just see if we can get the amplitude here to increase. It sounds like the amplitude did come up just a bit. Let's uh, let's check this antenna. Usually, when you put your hands near this and change the inductance and capacitance of the antenna, the uh, signal will increase, and uh, that's not occurring. Let me get my uh, LCR meter over here and let's just check the inductance of this antenna and uh, see what it shows since this is not the original antenna. And I'm not sure if that's even showing up there due to a glare. Let's see if I can hold that where you guys can see it and I can see it, but we've got a problem with the antenna, I believe. Let me uh, clean these solder connections here and see what's going on. You can see the inductance here is uh, questionable and it's jumping around all over the place. And it looks like the loop antenna is open. Um, you can see the uh, DC resistance is all over the place. Let me uh, grab my uh, fluke meter and just check DC resistance and see what it shows. Okay, if I'm looking at this right, guys, it shows that this loop antenna is actually open. So uh, that's what he's been testing off of. Let me uh, just check the leads here and see if I see something broke or uh, we'll desolder this and uh, heat everything back up. And it's hard to see visually, but um, I don't see anything wrong. This lead here being the outside uh, lead looks like it loops back in and is soldered up here. And the innermost uh, winding is uh, soldered up here. But, uh, let me uh, fire up the soldering iron real quick and uh, let's heat these up and see what happens. We'll just do a, a DC test first. All right, uh, still no go. Let me uh, see if I can uh, pull up on these leads here. 
and let's see if we've got a break here near the uh, terminal strip itself here. Okay, that looks uh, like I'm soldered in right there. And that may not be showing up that well, guys. I apologize. Let's check this, and this other one comes up from underneath here. Ah, I'm not sure if I just broke that or if it was broke right there. Let me uh, see if I can pull enough back here and uh, just reattach. But I'm again, I may have just broke that lead. All right, I'm going to take just a little uh, sandpaper here and see if I can get the wax off of this and any other uh, oxidation. I really need to get back in here and uh, just clean these connections up really good. I'm just trying to do a quick uh, repair here and uh, see if that makes any difference here. Let's get the uh, meter back over here and do another DC test and see what happens. Well, we've got uh, DC resistance, if that's showing up, about 3.4 ohms. I think that would be close. Let's look at the inductance reading here. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. You can see uh, 234.6 uh, microhenries and 3.36 ohms. So that's what I would expect to see somewhere in the, the uh, 200 range on the microhenry side. We may have got lucky here. I don't think I've ever had a uh, open antenna lead uh, cause that type of distortion. Maybe that's because I was always using an external antenna. Very fragile there. Let me uh, get these leads hooked back up and we'll see what happens here on the receiver. Well, our signal sounds strong. Try to bring the uh, radio back here where you guys can see it and just a little glance of the antenna itself and uh, let's check now and see what we've got off of the uh, plate there of the uh, RF tube and that's coming off my uh, signal generator listen how loud that is now and let's go to the grid here of the uh, 7A8 And you can hear that signal as well. And I don't hear any uh, distortion. Let's go back to a, a local broadcast station here and see what we can pick up. Let me kill the uh, RF generator. Okay, that's sounding good. That got rid of the uh, distortion. I'll go ahead and continue with the uh, IF alignment, check the oscillator, and uh, make sure everything's tracking across the uh, dial. But, uh, ben, if you're watching, man, I'll get this uh, back to you soon. And uh, if you can find the original antenna, that would be great. But uh, I'll go ahead and make a repair on this other uh, loop antenna so you can use it in the meantime and I'll go ahead and get a, a safety cap uh, put in here as well. So guys I hope you found it helpful uh, just never uh, overlook one of these old uh, loop antennas just being the uh, problem.
And before we end the video, too, let me uh, show you this uh, simple chassis stand that I uh, put together. Here's the uh, little prototype uh, chassis stand. Nothing fancy, but I thought I would show it real quick. Um, somebody may be interested in uh, putting one together out there.